are. <laughs> It's an honor to learn from you, Master Yanqing. In all those immersions and novels I watched, when apprentices want to pay their respects to their masters, they usually bring fancy gifts, kneel, and bow. I'm really sorry, but I haven't prepared anything yet. Hey, why are you blushing, Master Yanqing? This is, uh, the first time someone has called me Master. I need to, uh, get used to it. Ahem. <clears throat> Let me make it clear. Swordplay training is about improving your body, mind, and strength. It's not a casual game you can master overnight. I promised General Huayan that I'd teach you Cloud Knight swordplay, so you can participate in the war dance and defeat at least one opponent. I'll do my best, but if you break your master's rules... Fine. A promise is a promise. Since I promised to study hard, I'll do my best starting today. Great. That's the spirit. March is in your hands now, Yen Qing. Don't be too easy on her. Don Hung, do you even have a heart? Did you lose it somewhere? By the way, where's Yun Li? I've found a quiet spot in the back garden of the Palace of Astrum for our first lesson together. Seriously? It's the first day and you two are already late? Why is everyone on the Lafu so laid back? So disappointing. Uh, uh, Master Yun Li, you're already here. Uh, sorry for keeping you waiting. Oh, wait. Were you trying to teach her in secret? <laughs> That's sneaky. <laughs> I'm just showing you what La Fu etiquette is all about. She might be my apprentice, but it's customary for the master to personally escort their apprentice to the place of learning. As the host, I'll be teaching Miss March the essence of Lawfu swordplay, after which she'll emerge victorious in the war dance ring. You won't be complaining about Lawfu swordplay then. Uh, stand aside, rookie. Let me show you how we Ju Ming sword masters treat their apprentices. Quickly, over here, Miss March. This is a reverse mentorship gift from me to you. I hope you put it to good use. What's this? Sienjo clothing? Oh, it's so beautiful! Sword practice requires precise movements. This outfit is tailored to fit perfectly and allows for smooth movements. I even added some small accessories. I put a lot of thought into it. You're awesome, Master Yun Li! See? <laughs> See? How can you compete with me? I'll teach March 7th the essence of Ju Ming swordplay so she can win the contest with my sword skills. Hm. Actually, I've prepared something too. Huh? You have a gift for me too, Master Yan Ching? Since you want to learn swordplay, Miss March, you'll need suitable weapons. So, I went out of my way to prepare a pair of swords overnight. Unfortunately, I didn't have time to ask the craftsmen to customize the swords for you, but I did my best to choose ones that look nice and are suitable for a beginner. I hope you like them, Miss March. <sighs> Thank you, Master Yanqing! <laughs> Bet you didn't see that one coming, did you, Yun Li? <laughs> the real competition is just getting started. Lucky to have two great masters, but why does it feel like things are getting a bit weird? So what do you think, masters? Does this outfit suit me? Perfect. 
perfect. I chose it carefully. It's perfect for beautiful young swordswomen like you and me. Ahem. <clears throat> All right, let's get started with the training. The person next to me is a Cloud Knight instructor I've brought in. For your first lesson, try exchanging a couple of moves with him. Uh, wait. We're having actual combat training for the first lesson? Isn't that a bit too intense? Well, I heard you have some experience with archery and martial arts. The first thing we're going to do is see just how strong your fundamentals are. Come on. Step forward and strike with the sword in the most natural way you can think of. It's important for us to grasp your natural movements so we can decide where to start and what you need to learn. If you're ready, let's begin. Uh, <laughs> okay. Peach blossoms and divine sword descend. Are you ready? Uh, yeah, I'm ready. But please go easy on me. Then I apologize in advance, Miss March. I could take ten of you. Here you go, please Master. have some tea. Pay close attention, Miss March. Lofty sword play is all about being Practice. swift and agile in your movements. Swords descend. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you! <laughs> Ignore him. Strength is everything. Right on time. Like this? Polish? Well done! So, how many of my moves can you block? Ha! Good prep with a true heart and focused mom. I'm starting to get the hang of it. I'll show you what I can really do. Azure Dragon. White Tiger. Eating less cards. Watch this! What are you mumbling about? Uh, isn't this a sword technique? Shouldn't I be saying something cool? Melt! March has quick hands and a flexible body. She's a perfect fit for practicing Lawfu swordplay. However, she lacks strength, and her strikes were a bit unfocused. But don't worry, that's totally normal for beginners. Once she starts practicing Dooming swordplay, she'll make heaps of progress. Given the situation, I believe Miss March should start by working on her, her strength. Footwork. Seriously, do you actually know anything about swordplay, or what? I could ask you the same thing! Dual swords require agility, so what's more important than footwork? Instead of focusing on her strengths, we should address her weaknesses. 
The drawback of wielding two swords is not generating enough force. What good is being quick on your feet if you don't have strength? It's not like we're dancing here. Skilled sword masters know how to play to their strengths and work on their weaknesses. Start with what you're good at, then tackle your weaknesses. That's the right way to learn. <laughs> you're quite the theorist, huh? Theorist? I you claim to be able to talk to swords. So what does that make you? A lunatic? Uh, hey, it's only my first lesson, and you're already arguing. Uh, come on, calm down, masters. I'll have to improve both my footwork and strength anyway. So it doesn't matter which one comes first. But it does matter. Just, Just listen, listen to, to me, me March 7th. Aww. Dear Himeko, Mr. Yang, and Pom Pom, we're all good here on the Sianjo La Fu, so no need to worry. By the way, how's your trip going? As for me, I've somehow become the apprentice to two Cloud Knight Sword Masters, and I've been honing my sword skills with their guidance. One of them is Yen Ching, the boy we've all met before. The other is Yun Li, the granddaughter of General Hua Yen from the Xianzhou Ju Ming. Both masters are super strict, giving me a real taste of how hard sword training can be. I tried to drag her into this, but she refused. Then I tried to rope Don Hung in, but Master Yen Ching wouldn't have it. Still, I didn't let the difficulty get to me. In just a few weeks, my sword skills have improved a lot! Both my masters think I have unique talents in swordplay, and are literally fighting each other to teach me their skills. Thanks to their guidance, I've actually made some progress. When I get back to the Express, I'll definitely show off my skills and impress you all! Looking forward to your reply. Yours, March 7th. March's sword skills are really coming along. She'll hold her own just fine in the war dance. Uh, just you wait and see. I'll show off my skills in the ring and win a match. I'll make both of you proud. <laughs> Can you believe it? March 7th has actually become a pretty decent sword master in such a short time. Now I understand why Grandpa always had a grin on his face while training me. <laughs> Are you sure he wasn't laughing at you? Oh, shut up! <laughs> <laughs> it's all thanks to your amazing guidance, Masters. Miss March, you're really getting the hang of wielding dual swords. If you're keen on advancing, trying out different Sienjo blades could improve your touch. Oh, let me see. Which sword is the most powerful? Single sword? Great sword? Or maybe a flying sword? There's no such thing as the most powerful sword. It's all about the skill of the sword master. Yen Qing wields several flying swords, while I only wield one. But remember how I kicked his butt at the Alchemy Commission? First, you didn't kick my butt. Second, 
Second, you'll never kick my butt. Third, how about we settle this right now and see who kicks whose butt? Yeah, I'm up for that. <laughs> and if I kick your butt, you'll drop out of the war dance. Deal? Why are you two arguing again? I thought things had been improving between you lately. There was talk that the leading disciples of the Law Fu and Ju Ming generals were supposed to face off in the war dance, but for some reason, they suddenly teamed up to train an apprentice of their own. <laughs> Turns out, the rumors are true. Tomorrow is the big day of the war dance. Shouldn't you two be focusing on honing your skills instead of teaching swordplay here? Uh, you're... Um, you're... Ah, oh, that's right! You're the pink-haired fox from the Yaoqing! This is Mr. Jiaocho, the healer working for the general of the Xianzhou Yaoqing. Ah, got it. So, you're the participant attending the war dance on behalf of the Yaoqing. And you were trying to sneak a peek at our training? Sorry for the misunderstanding. I don't know anything about martial arts. I'm just here on the General's orders to take care of some official business. I didn't mean to interrupt your training. I'll be on my way. If you know nothing about martial arts, why were you smirking earlier? <sighs> well, my curiosity got the better of me, I suppose. When I heard Miss March's pondering about what to learn, I couldn't help but wander over. From my professional experience, cleavers, slicers, chopping knives, and carving knives are all just tools. Kind of like frying, sautéing, boiling, and deep frying in cooking. They're just ways for people to show off their skills. How you use them really depends on the ingredients you're working with. It's like your sword teaching methods. If you align your ingredient, in other words, your apprentice's natural tendencies, with the right cooking method, by which I mean the teaching method that best suits her, she'll make double the progress in half the time. For example, golden eggplant tastes best when fried cloud peppers when stir-fried, and yellow boulder beef when simmered. It's all about discovering the nature of the ingredients. Uh, I mean, apprentice. <sighs> all this talk about food is making me hungry. <sighs> are you a healer? Why are you talking about food? Well, it's just a metaphor. The medicinal school I follow on the Xianzhou Yaoqing is called the Ranja School, that specializes in food therapy. So it's only natural that I know a thing or two about cooking. So, you're the general's cook? I'm a healer. <sighs> but anyway, a cook who isn't interested in health doesn't make for a good advisor. Fine. Call me a cook if you want. Seeing the way you're looking at me, it's obvious you think I'm just some feeble academic who likes to blabber on about martial arts. But, in reality, I know a thing or two about killing. After all, the art of healing inherently encompasses both life and death. Why is this guy suddenly getting all serious with kids? Do you recognize this bottle of medicine in my hand? No. This is called tumble dust, an extract from an exotic flower named Yabra. Ugh, is it poison? Well, it depends on how it's used. With just one drop, it's able to numb a patient's body during surgery, making them painless throughout the entire process. However, increase the dose or the potency, and it'll slow the metabolism, 
making the blood thin and resulting in the loss of all senses. Even long-life species cannot escape its effects. This thing can save lives or take them. It's more powerful than the swords in your hands. That may be so, but still, I prefer settling things with a sword than, you know. Huh. Looks like I did get you all wrong. You're not a feeble scholar, but a sinister and despicable one. Hey, hey, why the insults all of a sudden? I'm just sharing some medical knowledge here, not persuading you to poison anyone. Seems like you get real excited when talking about poison. I can't tell if that's an honorable thing or sinister. Picture this, two individuals, the one standing is full of malice. The other lying down is honorable and righteous. How can the one who's lying down label the one standing as sinister? In the throes of combat, where life and death hinge on a singular moment, every idea fades into nothingness. The only thing that matters is staying alive. Surviving the battlefield reshapes all notions of worth, be it integrity or treachery. In my eyes, their significance is negligible. Perhaps you've underestimated Yunli and me, Mr. Zhao Cho. We may be young, but we've seen our fair share of war. <laughs> well, well. Then you should know that the war dance is nothing more than a contest. So why are you so focused on it? When I was appointed as the ringmaster for the war dance, I asked the general, we Cloud Knights are supposed to charge into the fray and slay enemies. Why do we have to swing swords in a ring just to please an audience? And this is how the general replied. To unsheath your sword in a ring is no different than on the battlefield as your sword reveals the might of all Cloud Knights. The war dance is the perfect chance to showcase martial virtue and forge alliances from all over the cosmos. When we unsheath the sword without drawing blood, we not only display our might, but also the martial virtue of the Cloud Knights. That's quite an insightful statement, Yan Ching. Well, my apologies for being so short-sighted. I've been on the Lawfu for quite some time, but I haven't had the chance to see the ceremony venue for myself yet. Hearing you speak so highly of it has piqued my curiosity. Would you mind showing me around? You want to see the Sky Splitter ship where the war dance will be held? Let's go! I bet Yun Li and Miss March haven't seen it either, right? Well then, I'll give you all a tour. Looks like a lot of other visitors have also come to catch a glimpse of the Sky Splitter. Uh, what's up, Mr. Jiaocho? No, it's nothing. Do you see that airship in the distance? That's the Sky Splitter. The venue for the war dance ceremony. It doesn't look all that impressive from this distance. The Sky Splitter is actually a decommissioned Lawfu military vessel. People aren't allowed on board until the war dance officially commences. Tomorrow, when the bell rings and the ceremonial cannons roar, I'll be there representing the Cloud Knights of the Sianjo Lawfu. Standing in the ring, ready to take on challengers from all over the cosmos. Since I was a kid, I've been training in swordplay and the art of war under the general. Every day, I'd swing my sword 10,000 times, and then thrust it 10,000 times, repeating the process over and over. I understand that I'm not like other kids, I never envied the toys and 
freedom they all had. I never found sword practice boring or hard. Even in the thick of battle, facing down savage abominations, I never felt scared. Each day, I could feel myself getting stronger and stronger, and I racked up countless victories. It's the best feeling in the world. But then, I faced a really tough opponent, and just one slash shattered my confidence into a thousand pieces. That's when I felt true fear for the first time. Maybe that's what Mr. Zhao Cho meant by life and death hinge on a singular moment. Every idea fades into nothingness. After that, I had to pick up the pieces and try to put myself back together. But no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't seem to find my old happy self again. I often ask myself, why do I wield my sword? If defeat is inevitable, why do I continue to fight? Is it to reclaim the joy of victory? To meet the general's expectations? Or to secure my honor among the Cloud Knights? And while the general could teach me the art of swordplay, he couldn't teach me why I should keep on going. He said, the reason must come from within myself. I've been struggling to find that reason. But after talking with you, Mr. Zhao Cho, I think I already have that reason in mind. As a member of the Cloud Knights and the General's Apprentice, I've had a weight on my shoulders. And I know there's still more to shoulder. But when I wield my sword, it feels like I'm letting go of everything. I love the feeling of giving it my all, facing any obstacle in front of me, pressing forward. That's why I wield my sword. Oh, Yanqing. So young, yet so grown up. By the way, how old are you exactly? Age doesn't really matter. All Swordmasters will understand how I feel. Hmm. I get it. Looks like all the kids on the Lawfu live tough lives. So, how about you, Miss Yunli? It's not polite to ask a girl her age, no matter which Siendo ship you're on. I'm not asking your age. I'm asking if you have a dream like Yan Ching has. You don't talk like a cook. You sound more like a TV host or something. <laughs> Need I repeat myself again? I'm a healer. Well, I... I don't have a dream like Yan Ching does. The only reason I'm participating in the Ringmaster's Challenge is because I made a promise to my grandfather that I'd win the precious sword he's contributed to the war dance. Sounds like that mind of yours is just filled with swords. <laughs> I bet you've got nothing better on your mind. My father was a craftsman on the Xianzhou Juming. Because of his foolishness, many innocent people fell victim to the cursed swords he forged. Since I was a kid, it's been clear to me that not everyone deserves to have a weapon in their hands. Giving them a sword is no different than being cruel to the innocent. So, whenever I come across someone unworthy of a sword, I can't help but want to take it away from them. <laughs> Given that Yen Qing is the war dance ringmaster, I'm stepping up to challenge him to ensure the precious sword doesn't fall into the hands of an unworthy master. Hey, what do you mean by an unworthy master? <sighs> I see. It's not easy for kids on the Juming, either. 
Well, it's better to have a reason for wielding a sword than to be lost and confused. I've saved countless Cloud Knights in my life, and there are plenty of exceptional warriors, just like the two of you. What happened, Mr. Jiaocho? Oh, oh, nothing. I was just reminded of some old friends and old tales. Judging from my professional perspective as a healer, both of you possess remarkable vitality. Your energies flow like raging fires and mighty gales. The upcoming fight will definitely be impressive. Well, we've seen the Sky Splitter and toured the Stargazer Navalia. I guess it's time to say goodbye for now. What? You're leaving already? But you haven't asked me about my dreams. I've been working hard too, you know. It's getting late, Miss March. Unlike you lot, I'm a grown-up bound by responsibilities and duties. The tasks entrusted to me by the General won't complete themselves. By the way, Yenqing, is it normal to have so many people wandering around in an automated area like the Stargazer Navalia? Actually, this is a restricted area. But since you're all guests, I made an exception, so you could take a look around. I understand. Well, I'll take my leave. I wish you both the best of luck in the ring tomorrow. Uh, seriously? I just spent so much time thinking about my dream, but he didn't even ask me. Now that we're done with our tour of the Sky Splitter, shall we continue with our training? Why don't we take a day off? What? You want to secretly practice swordplay by yourself? Dream on. <laughs> you know cramming before a fight never works out. For some reason, seeing the Sky Splitter has boosted my confidence. So. I've decided to conserve my strength for tomorrow. All right, I'll take you out of the Stargazer Navalia. Oh, just shut up, Red Fang. This is not a beast ship. I need some time to take care of things. You willingly donned the skin of a lowly beast to join this mission, dedicating yourself to our glorious cause. And now you're telling me you can't handle it? Do you realize how many ships we need? I'm doing my best, all right? It takes time to figure all this out. When the guns go off tomorrow, all eyes will be on it. That'll be our only chance. How's that? Who's there? Who are you guys? An impromptu inspection. Why are there outsiders loitering in Stargazer Navalia? And a bunch of kids at that. <laughs> Hey, kids, didn't your parents ever tell you to stay away from the Stargazer Navalia? I know it's an automated facility, but it doesn't mean you can just break in and do what you want. Ah, uh, sorry. I'll take the little ones away right now. Uh, big sis, let's go. I, I want to play in Ever Hunt Plains. Ever hunt planes? Uh, uh, yeah, sure. A big sis will take you there. Shuha! You should have let me. Shh, the overhaul is done, and everything looks good. We should leave.
Could you repeat what you just said, Yenching? What did I say? Big sis, let's go. I want to play in everyone planes. Uh, come on. Can't you read the room? Something is definitely off about the three people we just met. Yeah, anyone could see that. <laughs> I just wanted to hear you say it again. That pink-haired fox tried to say something. I'm pretty sure he sent something fishy. Since he's not familiar with this place, he just dropped us a hint. But you didn't seem to be paying attention at all. I knew that from the beginning. They said they were doing an overhaul, but it looked like they had no idea how to operate the Starskiff production line, right? And it's suspicious how they suddenly finished their overhaul and walked away as soon as they laid eyes on us. A Clout Knight, a member from the Skyfaring Commission, and a craftsman. They're from various departments, and the reason for the overhaul seems legit. One of them blurted out some weird language just now. Did you hear that? <sighs> I have a feeling that if we secretly tail them, we'll definitely catch these guys in the act. Follow my lead, and be careful not to blow our cover. Never mind who they are. Let's just film them. We should have just killed those lowly beasts. Those little brats won't take up much space. There are boxes all over this place. Just dump them into one and no one will notice. Cut the theatric screw lock. Even the slightest slip up could interfere with Lord Moktok's plans. So where are we heading next? To check the freight skiffs. We've got a lot of preparations to do. Also, don't forget to take those crates with you. Weapons, supplies, we've got to be well prepared. Otherwise, we're screwed. So, are they... smugglers? What exactly are they up to? I have no clue, but they seem to be moving those crates. I've got an idea. We can hide inside the crates and follow them. I can hardly breathe. Just hang in there. Let's just put the cargo here for now, all right? Then we'll move on to inspect the ships. Lord Moktok said that as soon as we're done, we're to board the freight skiff and leave this place. Don't worry, I've changed the shipping schedule. You two, come with me. Is it just me? I keep smelling that stench of lowly beasts everywhere we go. Don't be so paranoid. Looks like they're planning to escape on the skiffs in Stargazer Navalia. They keep talking about their plans, but where do they come from? And what do they want to do on the Sienjo? Uh, they're definitely up to something bad. Wait, uh, they disappeared! Uh, let's catch up to them!
Don't be so paranoid. We're running out of time. Get over here! Zuhart, I'm coming! They're leaving. We should catch up to them. Quickly! wearing official uniforms, but I'm pretty sure they're not members of the Skyfaring Commission, the Artisanship Commission, or the Cloud Knights. This is way too suspicious. Uh, never mind who they are. Let's just film them. That way, if they do anything bad, we'll have solid evidence against them. Look at this. A freight star skiff with enough room to fit at least 20 of my men. I'll let the others know and have them prepare more star skiffs. Once we're past the checkpoint, there will be beast ships waiting for us. Lord Moktok is ready. The revival of our ancient bloodline all hinges on this operation. What did he just say? Beast ships? Who's there? It's those brats! I told you to get rid of them, but you didn't listen, you idiot! Wipe them all out! Morrison? Adusa! Die, you lowly beast! Nice job! Nice, I get my friends. <laughs> Indulge yourselves! Familiar. I weep for the departed. It too shall fall. How did these Foxians change their appearances like that? They're not Foxians at all. They revealed their true form. They're Borison, just like the bandits I defeated on the IPC ship. Wait, that means... Well, how did the Borison manage to infiltrate the Sienjo? It's not just a simple disguise of wearing our clothing and shaving their whiskers. They're somehow able to alter their appearance to be indistinguishable from Foxians. They even have official IDs for the Skyfaring Commission, the Artisanship Commission, and... and... even the Cloud Knights? Let me check this fake Cloud Knights tag. Maybe it'll give us some clues. Lujun? An officer of the patrol defense squad? Uh, wait! What's the matter? I encountered a patrol officer named Lujun before. It was a few weeks ago, when we were transporting the Borison prisoners. If they can forge official identities and move around the Sienjo without raising suspicion... Oh no, this is bad. Uh, even worse. If you find one cockroach on the express, it usually means... There are more Boris in hiding on the Sienjo. I bet their plan is much bigger than just stealing information. We've got to report this to the Seat of Divine Foresight. <laughs> 